Hello friends, and welcome back to Keith's Kitchen. It's right here. Today, we're making something I'm excited for. I'm excited pretty much every week, but this week specifically, because I've really, really wanted to make this for a while, and I just haven't, the time hasn't been right. My spirit has not been easy about it. But now, today, it is easy. The time is right. I'm making mac and cheese. Okay, but not just any mac and cheese. I'm making mac and cheese with a homemade cheese sauce that I'm gonna bake. All right, I'm excited about this. So the cheese sauce is pretty simple. Uh, it's butter, heavy cream, cheese, and that's it. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make it. And the water's actually on the stove right now because it takes a little bit to boil. And uh, I'm excited. No homemade pasta this week. I don't have um, the, the stuff you need for it. So maybe it'll be something in the future. Maybe I can do some homemade pasta, that'd be nice. But not today. Today we're doing regular pasta. So come along with me as we make homemade mac and cheese. Let's do it. To begin, prepare some pasta. So I'm just preparing some gluten-free pasta. Uh, my wife is gluten-free and I'm just following the instructions on the back of the box. Super simple, I got four quarts of water with some salt boiling on high heat, I'm gonna add in my pasta and stir continually for about seven to eight minutes. Use this time to preheat your oven to 350 degrees, and with the magic of editing, the pasta will be done. Once the pasta is fully cooked, grab one noodle if you can. It's kind of difficult for me for some reason. Give it a taste to make sure it's done to your liking. Mine was just about al dente, although it was gluten-free, so it's kind of hard to tell. Regardless, once you're finished cooking the pasta, very carefully pour out all the water and strain that pasta while we prepare to make the cheese sauce. To begin construction of our cheese sauce, the first thing we need is butter. So turn your pan to medium heat and grab about three tablespoons of butter, because what cheese sauce is good cheese sauce without butter, right? So we're going to melt it down, and uh, to that butter, we're going to add one and a quarter cups of heavy cream. Make sure to add the heavy cream kind of slowly and stir to incorporate. The cream will probably be cold, so you don't want to freak out the butter in there. So add it slowly and stir, and after you've added all the cream, add in whatever seasonings you want. I added some black pepper. Um, you could also add garlic. You could add, I don't know, other stuff. You know, no judgment zone. You add whatever seasonings you want. You know, I won't even judge you if you add in something funky like cinnamon. Okay? You do you. All right? But uh, once we've added in the cream and the spices and brought the uh, mixture to a slow simmer at medium-low heat, we're going to add in our cheese. So here I have about a cup and a half of white and yellow cheddar. And I'm just going to slowly add in handfuls to the mixture that's simmering on the stove. And you're going to stir it in until it melts and you can't see any pieces of cheese. And you're just going to continue this for the entire container of cheese. The key here is to not add too much because you don't want it to clump up. You're just going to be patient, add it in, and it'll take you just a couple minutes. And you can add any sort of cheese you want. I just chose cheddar because I wanted to be plain Jane. So once you add all of the cheese, let the mixture simmer for just a little bit to thicken up, and then you'll be ready to add in your pasta. Fold in the pasta and top with a bit more shredded cheddar, or again, whatever kind of cheese you want, I don't care. And we're going to put this into the oven at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. After the 30 minutes is up, pull out the macaroni and cheese, revel in its bubbly goodness, let it cool for a little bit, because if you don't, you'll be sad, and that's it. All right, friends, it's done. Put it in the china, because uh, getting fancy. Whenever you eat mac and cheese, okay? Regular craft mac and cheese, whatever. Eat it out of a paper cup, okay? That stuff is that's fine. No judgment zone. I'm not going to judge. But it, it's not a special occasion thing. Baked mac and cheese, 
calls for the finest of China. Crack open that cupboard that you, you never use, those fancy plates that have weird flowers and plants on them you couldn't name, and strange animals and whatever. All right, this is the time to use it. Okay, so it's got crispy bits. Not always the best thing to have in your food, right? If I'm having soup, I don't want crispy bits. All right, but this I'm excited about. So let's taste it. I don't, I don't know what to say. It's almost like a religious experience, you know? It's pasta, which is wonderful. It's cheese, which is wonderful. It's baked, which generally makes everything a little more wonderful. So take two wonderful things, put them together, bake it, which makes it more wonderful. And you get like, I don't know, I don't do the math, like quadruple wonderful. It's really good, okay? It's creamy. It's cheesy. It's kind of oily, but I mean, it, it's, you put like two blocks of cheese, you know, a cup or more of heavy cream, straight up butter. I mean, you know what you're getting into, all right? It's really good. Make this at home, okay? It's not gonna replace Kraft Mac and Cheese because Kraft Mac and Cheese is its own beast. It's Kraft Mac and Cheese product. There's no, there's no cheese in there, all right? Maybe there is, I don't know. No judgment zone, I'm sorry, I'm breaking my own rule. No judgment zone. But this is really good. All right, so go try it. And uh, let me know what you think. Anyway, I'm gonna have another bite just cause I can. See you next time. Peace out.